So before we get into the UEFA Champions League semi-final against Inter Milan, yes, I know, a very exciting game, I wanted to say something that I hope I won't regret at the end of this episode. See you guys on Thursday for the Champions League final. Will I be something I regret saying? Will I be knocked out by Inter and Diego Simeone? And will I be absolutely sad? Well, I know one thing for sure. At least we're doing better than Partizan is doing in real life. I don't even know if I should celebrate this. I'm sorry, guys. Hi, guys. Mr. Space Reporting for you again. Welcome back to a Champions League semi-final. Once again, we're back at the big stage. And once again, we're at the stage where we fell last time. It was unfortunate. We got knocked out to Real Madrid. But now we have a chance to set things straight. We're taking on Inter Milan. We're playing them twice for you today. Because enough of this one episode stuff. We want to play two games in an epi. That is absolutely amazing. Smash the like button if you agree. But first of all, I want to mention something. Partizan is doing awful in real life. And um, yeah, I hope you guys can find some sort of... What's even the right word? Escapism in this. And to make it better, we beat Serena's Vesda 4-0. I know we lost to them like 4-0 two weeks ago, but in this universe, we're beating them 4-0 with goals from Valverde and Erling Haaland. Yeah, feel free to live in this universe. Oh yeah, and just a quick heads up, of course, I'll be making this save available at the end of the season, where I hopefully will be ending this career with you guys on YouTube, and you can take on Partizan by yourself, and you can enjoy playing with these heroes. So far, I've already uploaded the save for when we lost to Barcelona ages ago, the very first Champions League final. I know you'll remember this, and now I will obviously do this. Other cool features, um, well, we actually beat Serena Zvezda twice 4-0, which is doubly exciting for you guys. The first one was a 4-0 in the league, and the second one was in the cup itself. So we're going to good places, we're destroying Serena Zvezda, and I'm really happy to say this. And Vajvodina was dispatched 1-0 from a goal from Stevan Yap, who came back from injury and got injured again, because... This man is an absolute idiot. I don't know how he did it. I, I don't know what he did before. He hurt his hernia and then he twisted his ankle. <sighs> Injury proneness. Anywho, we're taking on Inter Milan today. And Inter is a very, very good side, as you guys know. They're managed by Diego Simeone, who are actually doing quite well. They are conceding more goals than I thought they would. And they're currently the best team in Italy by seven points, which is absolutely insane. And they have Diego Costa, who you won't be able to see. There we go, Diego Costa, who rejected us to go and play for Inter Milan all those years ago for 400k. Yeah, I'm still bitter about this. But apart from that, they have a very, very good side. I think if you look at it by transfer value, they have some very good players. They still have, what's his name, leading the line, Lautaro Martinez. They have Victor Giorges on a loan. Okay, that is kind of weird. He still looks absolutely amazing. They have Esposito, they have Vertesi, Bentecourt is playing for them. DeMarco, Bastoni, and a bunch of other good players. Is there anyone else special that I don't know? Uh, Potentially, who's this guy? He looks actually incredible. Gianluca Pestrani. He's Argentinian. And he's not Italian. Hmm... With a family name like that, it kind of sounds Italian, but what do I know? And apart from that, they have the best striker in the universe called Darwin Nunes, who's injured. So unfortunately for us. Right, and here is our starting lineup for today's episode. I wanted to see if I can play all the best players all at once. And with that in mind, we have Lachlan Deans on the right-hand side playing a Trequatista. Hopefully he'll remember how good he is at there. And apart from that, this team is quite Basically the best we can do. We have obviously Ederson in goal. We have Bayas on the left-hand side. Lukeba, Lemke as the back two. Gilson will be the right back. Teklak, Valverde and Gavi the midfield three. Milovanovic on the left. Holland up front. And like I said, Deans is going to be the Chocotista. We've made some other changes here. We're going a bit more narrow just so we can kind of abuse the, tr the basically beautiful three players that we have in the midfield. We're going to be playing shorter, slightly higher tempo. Focus playing through the middle, be more expressive because we are absolutely incredible. Apart from this, everything is pretty much identical. We're going to be playing to fullbacks because I don't like playing to center backs in this game because they mess up and I don't like that at all. And finally, we're going to step up more, press more often and just basically a very basic defensive shape. And another change I've done, well actually two, is put Mizala roll on Valverde because I do like the midfield guys going up that way and I want to put Taklak as a defensive midfielder on a support function. Basically, it's on him to decide whether he goes up, whether he goes down and basically that's just something for him to protect his back four because that's something we sometimes forget. You know, we need to defend a little bit more and hopefully having him on support will actually make this team a bit more flexible. 
Looking forward to this. But anyways, guys, I'm excited for this game. We are playing Inter Milan away. Our previous meetings have been hit and miss. We've played them a few times in the Champions League already. And so far, I think they are the better side. They've won more than us. Obviously, the first few times we were not the best team. But then as we got better, we started playing better against them. But anyways, Inter Milan is incredible. I hope you're excited. Smash the like button if you're excited. Leave a comment about what you think the prediction is. And leave a comment on if you think we'll make it to the Champions League final. And don't cheat. Although, do cheat. I don't mind either way. Because I feel, in my heart, we're going to make it. We're going to be seeing you guys on Thursday in the Champions League final. And I'm going to be winning the second trophy to eclipse Trevena Svesta. Let's go. Okay. And, man, this... Sometimes you look at teams and you go, wow, how few things change. I recognize so many names. We've been at this game for like seven or eight years. And so many of these players are just players that are playing right now, which is kind of incredible. But I was hoping to see some more. What's it called? I forgot already the names. I'm forgetting the terms of FM. What is going on? Don't go on break, guys. It'll break your rhythm. What are they called? Regents. There we go. <laughs> My god, regions. Yeah, well, I was expecting more. I think some teams have more, some teams have less, so it's kind of exciting that way. But they still have very, very good players. And what they don't have is a new and updated stadium, which I find absolutely insane. I don't know when they're going to do it. I'm looking forward to seeing it. But one day will be FM25, I guess, at this rate. I don't even know. But Benthicor is going to be playing with Schurz at the back. Again, same names. I keep hearing the same names. I want to see more change. Maybe next year we'll have a bit more mobility, but at the same time, it's kind of makes sense in FM. Not everyone's Chelsea. As Lautaro Martinez makes a run down the middle, and Ederson is tested in the first seconds, and he doesn't pass the test. Unfortunately, Lucas Gabriel is injured, so we are missing him, but Ederson should be good enough to deal with things like this. And an even funnier anecdote, actually. Uh, we almost signed Lautaro Martinez on a free... And then I decided not to because we have too many forwards for next season. And I wanted to leave you the flexibility of working on it next year without giving you too much wage budget. Now I look like an idiot. I look like an idiot. But Holland, though, taking a free kick from 25 million yards is not being an idiot. Oh my god. That was part of the plan. You know, it's part of the things we practice on the freaking transfer transfers training board. I'm... I'm going insane, guys. Literally, this is why I can never live stream. At least here, I can cut and I can get rid of all the things I say. But when I live stream, you get all the messy stuff. Although, to be fair, I'm really bad at editing, so you guys can see all of it. But Lautaro Martinez is playing the ball back to Prestiani. And Ederson does not want to go for it. Alarm bells are, in fact, ringing. And as you can see by everything, I mean, it doesn't look that bad. They're just getting lots of chances. And it just looks fancy. But we are kind of in control of the game. I don't know if you can say that, but the fact that it's already 1-0 and we are struggling to play the ball out. They are bossing us in the midfield. They're bossing us everywhere. Is that because of the inverted wingbacks? I don't know, but Georgias is offside. So at least that's something to think about. But I do wonder, and this was something that I wanted to mess around with, actually. One day, I want to figure out what all these things do. Goals awarded, though. Hang on, What? As I was messing around with these things, we're down 2-0 against Inter Milan. Where the hell is Gilson going? Who played Georgis offside? Are we going to see the offside lines? Who kept him onside? Lemke kept him onside. Mm -hmm. We do need to create something though, as the ball is bouncing all over. If we get one back, we have a chance, but it's 17 minutes in and Frederico Valverde... Almost makes it 2-1. Literally, don't be late to any of the games that Partizan is playing in. Because if you're late by like 10 to 15 minutes, you will miss all the goals apparently. As Gavi has a chance to put a good cross in. He plays a really poor cross in. So I guess his chance didn't go that well. But Deans plays it back to Gavi. Who finds Fede. Who finds the back of the stands. Yeah, I don't know. Do we just mess around with the zooms? I think at this rate, is that what something we do? Let's bring it up. Ooh, it is exciting, actually. Let's make it a bit more interesting because nothing else is going to happen anyway. So let's make it like this and let's see what happens. I. This looks awful. Hang on. This is some live stream magic that you guys get. There we go. Camera zoom. Uh, still looks awful. That looks okay. That looks okay. I think so. If it's if it looks awful, I will try and reset it at some point. But Gavi finds Fede Valverde. And oh my god, it was my tactical decision to change the camera that let him go. Ooh, 
I can see a space there, and he managed to score. What a beautiful goal by Valverde. He's had, what, two chances already this game? He's finally taken one. And Diogo Costa will be a little bit sad, I think, to have conceded that, but it was a very good low-driven shot that, well... First touch, bottom right corner, never mind. That was a beautiful corner. He is Roberto Carlos. That's it. Just say it. He is Roberto Carlos. I am not deluded. No, not at all. I am not insane. We have two minutes of extra time and we are down by one goal. After playing, kind of good football actually. So, you know, Inter Milan had their two chances and they've taken them and they've abused us. Now it's time for us to start playing this game. I feel like no matter what I do in this game... Partizan has this thing where we start games quite slow. And against bigger teams, we tend to clown around for a bit. And then we realize, oh, wait, we're meant to win this damn thing. And then start doing well. Like Erling Haaland, for example, takes the game into his own hands. And Diogo Costa makes a save. And to be fair, okay, Erling Haaland made Costa look better by just shooting it directly at him. But also Costa is a good keeper. So, you know, fair enough to him. But Gavi, can you put in a good cross? Is this going to be a pointless highlight? Deans finds Milovanovic. Uh, we're playing rugby. But I mean, at least we have our excuses ready. Our XG is better. So they're cheating, clearly. Um, yeah, it's unfair. Blame everything else. Don't blame me. But I will actually blame my players because I'm actually very, very disappointed with the way they're playing. We do need to play a little bit better. Lockie Deans is actually doing okay in the Chocotis stat, but Milovanovic has disappeared slightly. So it's something we need to think about a little bit. Potentially, though, Maybe we just play him down the middle, play like this a little bit, fully commit down the middle, use Gilson as an attacker, use Bayas as a bit of an attacker, and just try and abuse this. I think I've also changed in possession to be a bit more direct, maybe slightly shorter, slightly higher, just to kind of play it out. Get rid of pass into space, because I feel like Holland doesn't suit that a little bit, despite the fact that he has quite good acceleration, positioning, and all that other fun stuff. So I don't know. Maybe the game thinks like, you know, he's too tall to be a person that runs in behind or maybe it's like, hey, he has too many other good skills. Yeah, because one of the things he likes is to beat the offside trap, knocks the ball past the opponent as well. So that's kind of perfect for passing the ball into space. But I don't know, man. Sometimes this game is a bit weird. But at the same time, we have Erling Haaland playing for Partizan. What can be weirder than that? We need to push all the way. I think one of the first things I'm going to do is take off Gilson and Bayas for more attacking wingbacks. It's probably something I should have thought about, but... I forgot about it. But anyways, let's not pay attention to my mistakes because it's not my mistakes that make me lose the game. It's FM and it's bullshit. As Lemke finds himself on the ball, who finds Gavi, we're finally in control of plays, finds Fede Valverde, who's going to pass to someone or he's going to run all the way on his own. Shoots again and Costa though. <laughs> Costa. Once again, continues the tradition of other keepers playing incredible and my keepers well, I mean, just look at Ederson. Like, just look at Ederson. I don't know. As Bayas puts it across and Costa makes another save. Okay, let's set everything to attacking and watch this highlight. <laughs> okay, I was going to say, let's put Gilson and Bayas on better, well, better players for them. But, um, well, no, the game has taken it out of my hands. And if we score, it's going to be a tactical brilliance by me because I timed it to perfection. If we don't score... Well, again, it's FM's fault, not me. I am really good. But Milovanovic makes a run down the middle. And what was even the point of stopping and looking at this? As Cesar Gusto is going to come on for Gilson. Bayas is going to come off for Sasa Serenic. And that's going to be my two subs that hopefully make a change. 2-1 as we are destroying them. Let's confirm the subs and look at the stats. Is a bit frustrating. They are playing... I want to say park the bus. As you can see, look at where my players are. Look at where their players are. They're not even planning to attack. We need to be a bit better, maybe cross a bit more, float crosses, use the fact that Holland is really, really strong. And then just, I don't even know at this rate, do we push out a bit more? Let's like uh, roll it out as a distribution, get the ball going faster, and then push them up as high as we can. I think at this rate, we're going to throw all caution to the wind. I know 2-1 is not a bad scoreline, but look how much we're dominating them. I don't want to lose another game, if that's possible. But the game doesn't care, so I'm going to make some more changes here. I'm going to put on a second striker, play with a bit of a diamond formation, because narrow and diamond formation mixes very, very well. And finally, I'm going to have to put on Bolaños as the advance forward, who's actually very, very good, and put Holland as a poacher, because I'm not going to take Holland off. I'm not insane. But in terms of other things, do I take of Loki? Do I take of Loki? I think so. I'm going to put an Estevao instead of him. And finally, I'll keep one more sub because someone will definitely get injured and I will be absolutely pissed off about it. But DeMarco, though, 
might make me angry right now as he hits the crossbar. Do we clear it? Yes, we do. Did Gilson save this? Gilson? Did Ederson save this? I wonder, but Teclak finds Valverde very far off the pitch, which is interesting. Can we continue this attack? The answer is, of course, no. We are going on very attacking. They're not even trying to do anything. They've taken their chances and they are happy to have this. What are we doing here, folks? What are we doing? What can we do? Well, we could always put Tech like up front and we could put Saldana up front somewhere just to fully, I don't know, put people up. Put Serenic, put Augusto, and then just pray we don't concede a third goal. But there is literally a minute left, and I have been FM'd. Unfortunately, they've taken their two shots on target early on, and we have a higher XG that we didn't really care about. Once again, Diego Costa on a 7.9, Ederson on a 6.3. Oh my god, what did I say at the start of this episode? See you guys on Thursday for the Champions League final. I feel like it's going to be very, very disappointing for me. And rightfully so, I slam the team and hopefully make them motivated. But right, we have a TSC game, which I'm not going to play for you right now. And then we have Inter Milan at home. You know how good we are at home, which is really, really good. The sad thing is I can't play the Champions League final at home, which would be absolutely good. Although, where's the Champions League final this year? It's in Baku, I think. Ooh, it is in Baku. Ooh, that's exciting. Not many people are going to go, but... It's exciting. Anyways, we're playing Inter Milan at home in about a second, but with which lineup? Well, of course, it's going to be with this starting lineup, where basically almost nothing has changed apart from a few small things. So first of all, Lavia is coming on instead of uh, Teklek and moving Teklek on the right-hand side, just to add a little bit more attacking forwardness. We're going to have Serenic on the other side be a more fullback on attack player because he's a very, very good player that can run up and freaking down. Maybe I'm going to set Gavi as a Mazala on support, just to kind of make sure we're still flexible. I do like that. And Teklak, obviously, is going to go on the right-hand side. But the squad is pretty much identical to last week's. And, um, oh yeah, our game against TSC went actually super well. We beat them 3-1 and rotated the squad. That's why everyone looks beautiful, green. Sharpness is high, morale is high, everyone is loving me, apart from Cesar Augusto, who I actually am pissed off about still. He still wants to leave. And on a final note... We really need this guy to do well, because unfortunately, he is starting to fall off, although not as much, but just a little bit. So maybe I can just put him sweeper keeper on support, just kind of max it out. Hopefully we can do that. I'm really looking forward to this. Anyways, hopefully the second game is going to be much, much better. I'm really disappointed at the way we've played in the last game. Maybe I'm going to make one small change and just go slightly shorter, slightly higher, just play it out like this and get rid of narrow, because I feel like narrow doesn't work. But fairly narrow works. Is that a fair assumption? Huh? Generally, guys, sometimes I think that you guys should unsubscribe from this channel, and yet you keep subscribing, and there's more and more people each time, which I guess is amazing. It just shows that people like to see dumb and crazy things, and I'm both. I feel like that's something I shouldn't advertise. Anyways, their squad is looking very identical, and I feel like Esposito, Salvatore Esposito, Playing in the center mid position is such a Simeone thing to do where you take a forward and go, you know what, I'm going to teach them how to defend and play in the midfield. This guy's a genius. Am I confusing you with someone? Am I confusing Esposito with someone? I swear he was a striker. Is there another Esposito that plays for the Italian national team? Um, I feel like, do they have another Italian? To play? I'm confused. I'm definitely stalling for time, obviously, because I want you guys to keep looking. And uh, if you guys are aware of this, please let me know in the comments. But I generally thought Esposito is a striker. Who am I confusing him with? Tell me in the comments. I'm going to start this game and I'm going to be like very confused for like the longest time possible. So hopefully our players play well, so it gives me time to be confused. But Bentecourt is going to find Esposito, actually, who plays the ball down to Georgias. Georgias? I mean, technically, it's crazy how, in this universe, Inter Milan is amazing. And I feel like their domination will be coming at kind of an end. Because Mart Martinez is old. I think Georgias is getting old. They're both 32. So it's going to be something they need to consider about rebuilding. And it's hard to find good young players 
forwards. But Esposito, though, on a counter, will thankfully find Castillo Jr., our 100 million center back, our... Do we call him Van Dijk? Yeah, let's call him Van Dijk. Erling Haaland, though, this is your chance to score on the big stage. Erling? Hello? Can somebody explain to me what the hell is going on? How does Erling Haaland not score sitters like this? And how does he not more score more goals against you guys? I mean, to an extent, I kind of understand it because we play against the better sides when I'm showing you guys live comms. But at the same time, though, he needs to be scoring this. This goal should have been in. And we're still down by 1-2, which is unfortunate. It's 1-0 down, which hopefully we can get it back by Gavi. Finds Holland. This is your second chance of redemption. Regardless, regardless of if he's onside, regardless, that goal is beautiful. That was a beautiful volley with his right foot. And for some reason, the first goal didn't go in. And this was awarded, by the way. Let's go from an easy position. So he goes, you know what? I can't score tappins. Let me score a monster of a shot. Right foot ball going away from the goal, going to make a weirder angle. The Costa was not looking at it at all, but a beautiful pass through Gavi. He just chips it over. Beautiful, I don't even know how to call it. That was a beautiful thing. Perfect for Erling Haaland. And he made me shut up. He's getting the Viviero treatment. He is shit. Haaland is so bad at this game. Please score some goals. Although we could concede a goal, but Bentecourt will cross and thankfully cleared by Van Dijk, called uh, Castillo Jr. Lotaro, though, is on the ball. He gets dispossessed by Fede Valverde. And oh my God, this team is cooking Ederson, though. Who are you going to find? Can you pass to the left if you can? No, he chooses to play the longest ball to Deans, who, well, the ball went off his uh, mohawk. By the way, he does have mohawk, mohawk, which is hilarious. But Georges will bring the ball back. We need to press them high, which we're not really doing. We do press them all the way back to Costa. Can we push up and put pressure on their players? They're very comfortable on the ball, which is probably why they have all the possession. But we need to be a little bit careful. Bastoni finds Costa again. We've pressed them all the way back. We forced the mistake. Holland one on the keeper. Erling Holland is an absolute donkey. No freaking way. Sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. Costa saved that? Wait, how do I... Hang on. How do I... Wait. I've never used this before. Camera zoom. Camera height? I want to see that again. I don't use this enough, but... Oh. Schurz blocks it. How did he get to it? What? Can we see this again? Zoom and enhance and all that stuff. With what did he block it with? He makes a lunge last minute and he clears the ball. Insanity. You got to respect that, surely. I mean, I don't because I'm pissed off about it, but let's go back live. I was going to say Holland is a donkey, but apparently that was beautiful defending by a very good defender. Respect. By the way, sorry, before I play this, look at the stats. If I end up losing this game, I'll be incredibly pissed off. But who is taking the free kick? Of course, Holland, because I refuse to update it. Lockie Deans, though, he stopped scoring goal after goal after goal when I changed my tactic. But he's going to score now, and the goal is awarded again. But we've seen this before. VAR can change its mind. VAR does not change its mind. Lockie Deans, I willed it into existence. Let's freaking go. Absolutely incredible play. Lockie Deans, man, remember the time when he started the season with three, four goals a game, really, and now he's finally back, gets played on side by DeMarco, and thankfully he puts it away. 2-0, let's go! And a beautiful way to end this half. I have almost nothing to complain about. We've given them all the possession, but they're doing nothing with it. So I'm just going to tell the boys that we're doing well. Maybe try to get more of the ball, but apart from that, like, if it works, it works, right? Why bother reinventing the wheel if the wheel is wheeling? Am I right? Is that what I said back in the old days as Milovanovic gets brought down and a penalty shout is being shouted? Do I give it to Ederson? No, no way. No way. Not, not now. Not now. Not at 2-0 when we're one goal ahead of Inter Milan. Is it even going to be given? Okay, first of all, yes, it is. But let's see who's going to be taking it. Will it be Erling? Will it be Erling Holland who scored... A hard goal, but missed two early chances, or easy chances in this case. Will he miss another easy chance? The answer is no, because Holland doesn't care. 
He shows up in a big game, 44th goal of the season. Why am I doubting him? I mean, definitely not time to be complacent because who knows? Inter Milan can just do two random counterattacks and we are going to be absolutely destroyed. But Prestiani is being pressured out, finds Bentacor in some space, who finds Esposito. Back to Bentacor. They're not given any space at all. They're matching us up striker for striker. So hopefully our players are better individually because in terms of shapes, well, they're kind of outnumbering us up front, but there's not much space in the midfield. Although Prestiani finds lots of time and space on the ball. Serenic is not coming to cover. Prestiani puts in a low cross. Finds Fratesi who is stopped by Ederson. And Tekla clears. And we have a breakaway of our own. As Loki Deans finds Lavia. Can we use this counter? Finds Fede. Everyone get back on side. What are you guys doing? Fratesi brings him down. The ref gives it. Give a red card. Come on. Come on. Give a red card. It's not a red card offense. But give it. He's given a warning. That is definitely a yellow card at least. At least. Well, there are 10 minutes remaining. We need to make some subs and Milovanovic is not doing good for whatever reason. So I'm going to give a chance to Estevao to come on and Bolaños as well for both Deans and Milovanovic. In terms of last midfielders, I feel like I should give a chance for... Lavia is a bit tired, but I don't have any good midfielders. Maybe... How good is Teklak? Teklak is good. I'm going to put Teklak on in here and give a run around for Cesar Augusto whose morale has improved at this game because he's happy to be going in the Champions League final at this rate. And finally, let's take off Gavi and bring on Shikaev, just to give some youngsters some run out. And did I absolutely ruin my chances because there was a highlight hidden in the back? Is this going to lead to anything scary? The answer, as Prestiani fires it in the top left corner, is yes. And Frederick... I'm sorry, regardless of how much of the ball Valverde touched, it's cruel to take it away for Pestiani because that was a beautiful volley. How bad was the deflection? It was going in the goal as well. And we get an own goal for it. And the game is back into a very scary situation. 3-1. Do we start to panic? They still had zero shots on target. They had a fluky goal. And Ederson has conceded three goals from the fact that they shouldn't have any chances there, but I think it's going to be comfortable. It's going to be comfortable. I said it's going to be comfortable. I had absolutely no worries, guys. This game was so easy. And the most important thing is, don't say it too loudly. We're in the Champions League final. On Thursday, I'm going to be seeing you guys in a Champions League freaking final. And then we're going to have to run off to training because, oh my god, man, it's actually scary. Although, to be fair, next week, training is a bit late. Hmm. That's going to be very good. But anyways, guys, I hope you are excited for the Champions League final on Thursday. That's absolutely insane. I'm really looking forward to it. The best part of it is I'm going to do it. And then I can shoot off on holiday for two weeks, which is awesome. So I'm going to be doing some things after it. But for now, we're playing in the Champions League final against Real Madrid. Staminich is on the score sheet. Is he going to win his first and only Champions League final? Oh my god. And that's a huge thing to leave this episode on. I hope you enjoyed this. We had a humongous turnaround. We did incredible today. Although, can we start the game a bit easier next time? We are playing a really, really good side in Real Madrid. And I want to beat them. Although, I'll be sad if Stamilich doesn't get the Champions League final. But maybe, maybe I'll just buy him next season when I finish the save. And then play with him until the end of time. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Smash that like button. I hope you're excited for the Champions League final next episode. And I'll see you guys in the Champions League final. Will I have a suit? Or I won't. I might change my mind. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.